Explorers and mappers of the last few hundred years have worked to find nearly every piece of land and uncharted area from around the world. Further advancements in modern technology such as satellite imaging and other innovations have also provided humans with the means to see almost every place on Earth with accurate precision. Going back a few years ago, NASA were baffled by these mysterious ice circles in the Arctic. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration has been making incredible discoveries for years, but interestingly this one wasn't made in space, but rather here on our planet. It all started when NASA sighted some of these holes in the ice. Temperatures here easily reach in the minuses. NASA had spent a decade flying over Earth's Arctic and Antarctic, trying to comprehend the association between the world's atmospheric frameworks. They think there could be a connection between Earth's Arctic, Antarctic and the mysterious holes. They were also trying to understand dangerous atmospheric conditions and how they affected our planet's surface. This mission had been named Operation Icebridge. When some NASA officials gave a report about the holes, they claimed this was the first time they'd come across them, and that they couldn't explain what they were looking at. One of the scientists that went on the operation said the holes can be seen for a few months of the year, before they suddenly disappear. The researchers knowing they had a short time of the structures made sure they took plenty of photographs. Part of the effort in solving the mystery was NASA sending it out to the public, and asking if anyone could come to a definitive answer for what the structures were and how they were created. One idea that was put forward was that of dissolving ice. Chris Schumann, a glaciologist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center had one theory, and that was that the Arctic ice is very cold, and when the warmer bodies of water come into these areas they melt the ice and cause these circular structures to form. This theory is just one of many that have been put forward, and interestingly this isn't the only discovery that's been made in the Arctic. Researchers back in 2014 came forward and said they were baffled when they visited this region. This was because some of the team said they could hear sounds while exploring the Arctic. They said the world's greatest chunks of ice started to sing, and this caused them to research the phenomenon. Before this however, they were here to investigate a large crack that had appeared. To get familiar with the ice crack, which can be found in the Southern Ocean, scientists in 2014 covered many seismic sensors under the ice. It was during this experiment that the researchers were also able to answer the mystery of the singing ice. It turned out the sensors showed that the ice was vibrating, and in turn this was causing a noise to be created something the team of scientists had never witnessed before. Wind blowing over the top of the ice shelf caused a sub-zero field to create an almost non-stop arrangement of noises. The tones are quite quiet and can't easily be heard. The equipment showed the noises were similar to that of a didgeridoo. The researchers likewise found that the reoccurrence of the vibrations changed because of changing climate conditions on the ice. When the temperatures rose or fell, for example, the noises would be different. Staying on the subject of sound, another thing that's baffled researchers is the reports by some people of the aurora borealis making sound. Interestingly, there seems to be a large amount of people who have said while observing the lights they've heard sounds. A report carried out on the aurora sound showed researchers that it was most notable around 230 feet above the ground. However, every so often these noises could be heard when lower to the ground. The report was conducted by utilizing a variety of mouthpieces to record and pinpoint the noises. The report would be the first concrete evidence that would support claims that the auroras truly made sounds, and throughout all the claims that sounds from the auroras are just myths and never existed. Some weren't entirely convinced of the noises, and said that those who were hearing them may have been suffering from a fever. The reports further demonstrated that during the event of the Aurora Borealis, individuals can hear normal aurora sounds and identify it with the colours of the auroras. On the 9th of September 2011, further research was carried out. Three amplifiers and a VLF radio wire were used during a geomagnetic storm to get 20 comparative sounds. The sounds varied in audibility. The gathered information permitted the estimation of the area and to know where the sounds were coming from. It turned out the majority of the sounds that were picked up on were in fact coming from the sky. 
while the research outcome helped in recognising the physical area where the sounds originated from, they don't clarify how the aurora set off the noises. It's like knowing where something come from, but not knowing why it came from there. However, there is a theory that the sun which is responsible for the display of the colourful lights is also responsible for the sound. This has not been proven scientifically. What is clear and proven beyond doubt is that the auroras make sounds. Moving away from sounds, Sigmund Levinsky was born on the 15th of May 1902. Levinsky served in the Russian army and got involved in the Russian Civil War. He furthered his education at the age of 23 years old in the year 1925, when he completed his education at the Naval Aviation School which certified him as a military pilot. In 1933, Levinsky became the pilot for the Chief Directorate of the Northern Sea Route. This was after leaving the All-Ukrainian Pilot School where he served as the training unit leader. His first international achievement came that same year when he evacuated an American pilot who had crash-landed. Levinsky with his co-pilots formed a three-man team on the 3rd of August 1935. Their mission was to travel from Moscow to San Francisco in a single motor aircraft. Several miles into their journey, their oil tank malfunctioned and started to spill. The best decision to take at that time was to turn back, and so Levinsky decided to abandon the mission. Levinsky didn't abandon his motive and the next year, he and a co-pilot looked to demonstrate the probability of an air course between the US and the USSR by means of the Alaskan Bering Strait. The flight was successful and they finished an 11,800 mile multi-stage departure from Los Angeles to Moscow. This was regarded as a huge feat by Levinsky and his team, and he was granted with Order of the Red Banner of Labor. On the 12th of August 1937, he started a long-distance flight from Moscow to the United States via the North Pole. He encountered problems, however, when he was trying to radio contact his team. While over the Arctic, his plane's right engine failed, which caused the plane to go down. The Soviet government financed two aerial searches to try and find his plane. However, at the time they weren't able to find anything, and ultimately knew deep down their fate had been decided. As of today, he and the plane has vanished. It's been theorised by researchers that Levinsky and the plane is somewhere in the Arctic, or that it crashed into the water and now lives in the depths. Another interesting discovery was made by scientists and this comes from toxic fallout. The researchers said that something bad is happening as the Earth's temperature rises. What they're talking about is the radioactive fallout from nuclear meltdowns and weapon testings. After the tests were done, that wasn't the end of the tests. Fallout then found its way into the glaciers all across the world. Now, if these glaciers melt, which it seems likely they will, it could mean that it might get released back into the atmosphere and this could have massive effects. A team of scientists have been working together to try and figure out spots where the fallout might be. So far, they've managed to find nuclear fallout in the Arctic, Iceland, the Alps, British Columbia, as well as Antarctica and as you can imagine, they're starting to get worried. It doesn't help either that researchers have said that Antarctica is melting at an alarming rate. Researchers and scientists who have been mapping and studying Antarctica have come forward and said they've been noticing some strange warming effects at our poles. This is happening at times they wouldn't expect. For example, at winter and in places like Antarctica. Recent studies have been released and suggest the planet is warming up. The scientists have said this warming in the Arctic and Antarctica have been causing many strange events. One being melting of off-winter problems including permafrost that never refroses winter and also wildlife deaths. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration released the following statement. In our recent report, we stated that last year was the second warmest year on record in the Arctic, and this came with many problems. Scientists have said that regardless of what your view on global warming is, one thing that everyone should agree on is that the glaciers are melting, and this could cause devastating effects. So what do you make of these interesting discoveries made in the Arctic? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.